Welcome uh, back to our final concluding panel. We will talk about the highlights and main commentaries from today's uh, opening day of the 24th conference of the Forum uh, 2000. It's the 24th uh, conference, however, it's really a new experience for us because it's first time we are completely online, so it's uh, very exciting uh, for all of us. My name is Irena Kalhousova. I teach at the Charles University in Prague. At the same time, I'm also a member of the program committee here at Forum 2000. And it's really a pleasure for me to moderate this final concluding uh, panel of the conference. Uh, we live in times which are characterized by a lack of stability and predictability, or to quote Anthony Giddens from today's morning panel or afternoon panel, he said, we live in a period of dazzling change. And I am very happy that we have here with us uh, Asha Ahmed Muilouf, journalist and documentary filmmaker from Kenya, and Yossi Klein-Halevi, who is author, a journalist and senior fellow at Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem, Israel, who are here with us and will help us to summarize the highlights of the first day uh, conference. So welcome uh, to our panel. And uh, yes, I would like to ask you, what do you think were the main ideas we heard today at the conference? What resonated with you the most? And I will first ask Asha to start. And I, I'm sorry, I will be, <laughs> we will need to be very brief. So I'll give you two minutes uh, to summarize uh, what do you think was the most important we heard today at the conference? Thank you, Irena, and I'm glad to be here. So right at the beginning of the conference, there is something that British historian Timothy Garton Ash said, and you know it resonated with me right at the beginning and throughout the, the panels that I've watched. Um, he reflected about the challenges that the world is going through, and you know talked about how he sees how he sees the world could get through the dark times. And his four points were truth, solidarity strategy and responsibility. And I've had so many panelists um, across the, the afternoon just talk about these four points and using even some of these words. So truth, the coronavirus has shown us that even in authoritarian states like Tanzania who don't want to reveal um, the real data or, or statistics on co coronavirus, that truth prevails, right? That there's things that you just can't hide. And uh, for, for us as humanity, once we acknowledge our truth, whether they are negative or positive, it is the beginning of advancing towards a better future. Solidarity, coming together, COVID-19 made us all come together and, you know, reflect on a, a better world. And strategy, how do we strategize about the future? And finally, responsibility. And I think, you yes. know, the climate this year showed us we need to take the responsibility. So for me, Irena, that Timothy's... Um, you know, utterances right at the beginning, I felt just wrapped up everything that resonated with me throughout the afternoon. Thank you very much. And thank you for pointing out also some positive conclusions for from the first day, because otherwise, you know, many panels will somehow gloom and doom. So uh, thank you very much for talking about a about, uh, positive lesson learned from, from the pandemic and, and uh, other global, uh, global issues we are facing. So Yossi, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Um, like Asha, my, my takeaway is also surprisingly hopeful. And um, what I heard was really that this moment is a convergence of four very significant events. The first is that we are experiencing humanity's first truly global event, which is happening in real time, where we know exactly what's happening in different parts of the world, and everyone is experiencing to one extent or another the same sense of fear, of anticipation, of uh, awareness of, of mortality, of our fragileness. Uh, the second uh, major uh, moment is the technological breakthroughs that we're experiencing, uh, which is enhancing our sense of uh, global awareness. Uh, there's technology 
that has been around for a few years. I'm thinking of, of tools like Zoom and Skype, but suddenly we've discovered that we can use these tools for in ways that, uh, that were inconceivable before. Uh, I find myself speaking to people throughout the Arab world, sitting in Jerusalem, uh, speaking in countries where Israelis are not allowed by their by other governments to be in uh, conversation with and yet i'm using skype i'm using whatsapp and so something has broken through the uh the barriers the third significant uh moment that's happening uh is uh, as as asha said uh, climate change uh, and that is giving humanity an apocalyptic sense of urgency we know we don't have a lot of time to deal with our systemic problems and finally the pandemic is happening at a time of major medical advances uh, if this were happening uh, a century ago millions would have already died the fact that the number are not higher than they are is uh, is really a, gives us a sense of 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 how far we've advanced at this at this moment, and I think it also gives us feeling that we will be able to cope uh, with climate change and any other problems that come our way if we have the will to do it. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thank you for being positive. Nonetheless, I will push you a little bit uh, further now. I would like to ask you about the most worrisome trends in our societies uh, today. You know, what, what did we hear uh, about what the, 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 the mankind, humankind is facing? What, what, what worries you the most? If I may start again with, with Asha. Thank you. I mean, there are a couple of things that worry me and, you know, a lot of the panelists brought them out. Um, of course, coming from Africa, we know about the rise of authoritarianism, um, no accountability with some of our governments. And that was actually brought out not just from, from Africa, but a, a lot of the other global South countries. But for me, I think what is so urgent is the issue of climate change. Because in Eastern Africa, we've had a couple of, you know, issues, not just the coronavirus pandemic. Before COVID-19 got to this region, we were dealing with a locust invasion, which is attributed by scientists as um, one of the effects of climate change. Right now, we are seeing the lakes bursting their banks um, in the Rift Valley and, you know, swallowing populations. And for me, I, I feel like it, it's such an urgent issue. And, and, and then I could see even the panel on climate change sort of like going back and forth over what the solution is. But the reality realization was that even in this year where the world was forced to pause, the world was forced to, to you know, to stop and, and halt air travel, there was, it didn't make much of a difference. You know, we had five to seven percent reduction emissions and that falls short of UNEP's goal. Um, and, and, and Aruna Bagosh um, the, from the Council of, on Energy and, Wo and Water from India said it right, that the pandemic actually played out a social experiment for us, that what happens when we pause as the world, is that the solution to some of the, the issues that we are, we are going through in terms of climate change? And guess what? It wasn't enough. So as human beings, as, as, as global citizens, it is really, it's just become a reality check for us that <clears throat> it is what to give, whether you believe in it or not, whatever the solution is, this year was that reality check that we need to stop and act really, really fast. Thank you very much. Yossi? Yeah, I'm worried about two political trends. Uh, the first is the, the weakening of the center uh, and uh, the rise of populism, uh, the far right and the far left. We're seeing that uh, happening in uh, countries around the world, uh, certainly uh, happening in the United States very strongly. Uh, the second trend uh, that, uh, that we're experiencing, uh, certainly here in Israel and in other democracies, is a weakening of uh, democratic uh, institutions, uh, sensibilities. Uh, for the first time in Israel's history, the government uh, has uh, placed a, a limitation on public protests. And uh, the strong fear is here is that Prime Minister Netanyahu is using uh, COVID as an excuse to try to to curtail uh, public opposition. Fortunately, it isn't working, but uh, we see that trend happening all around the world. 
And uh, the opposite question, uh, what do you think, you know, what are the positive lessons we learned from this very unstable situation we live in now when uh, we have this, uh, this big shifts caused by digitalization, of course, the climate change and now the global pandemic. Uh, so what, what, you know, are you a little bit positive? Did we, did we see some positive trends uh, uh, following this major, major crisis we now, we now live in? And maybe I will start with Yossi for change, so Asha has a little bit more time uh, to, to think about the question. In, in some sense, I think that this moment is the equivalent of uh, the, um, the first space launching uh, in the 1950s when the, when the photo images of planet Earth were broadcast back to us and we were stunned. We, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't conscious then, but uh, humanity was stunned by the fragileness, the smallness, the compactness of planet Earth, and the intimacy, the fact that we really are a single organism. And I think that uh, the space age was really the beginnings of a genuine uh, global consciousness. You know, when we, we, we speak about monotheism as, as oneness, the oneness of God, but I think that there's something uh, in this time that gives us the experience of oneness. And COVID is the, uh, the, the frightening side of that experience. We, we, we have had our first, as I said earlier, our first genuinely universal experience. And that, I believe, will give us the emotional tools to deal as a planet with the challenges that uh, Asha was speaking about earlier. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a very nice uh, message that actually we are a single organism and we will get out of this together, hopefully out of this pandemic. Uh, Asha, please. Thank you. I think my point is actually something that Yossi mentioned right at the beginning about, you know, what the pandemic taught us, digitization. Um, you know, there's the panel um, on fighting the politics of hate. One panelist said that, you know, the proposal is that we can only fight the politics of hate by using the politics of empathy and tolerance. And I really think that that is something that we can take forward. Um, I saw that in play, you know, through social media in this part of the world, especially right when the pandemic was beginning. I mean, you know, social media has been so crucial in this time in, in a lot of African countries to the point that, you know, it's now being used to even fight authoritarianism. Just yesterday, Nigerians on, on Twitter, you know, had a big win. They had this hashtag end SARS and they were basically um, asking the government to disband this police service, um, this police unit that was going around, you know, firing at protesters and, and brutalizing people. And, you know, President Harry listened to people online. So I do think that there's such a hope. And even as we look at social media as sometimes very menacing, as that panel on the politics of hate mentioned, that it actually addresses people's realities and we need to look at, you know, using it for good. So for me, it's, you know, that message of politics, tolerance of empathy is what I want to take forward from, from this year's conference. Thank you very much. I think that was a very nice message, the end. Uh, and uh, with this, we will conclude uh, today's conference forum 2000.